Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry it's been long awaited, but um, I finally got something that I can record now. And um, yeah, sorry for the wait. Hey, we're about to get to 25 subscribers. Please share, like, and comment, and subscribe. I want to get to a 25 subscriber, then I'll do a 25 subscriber special. Once that's done, then I'll do another special, maybe 50 or 100 subscribers. But if I hit 500,000 subscribers, maybe never will happen, but may. I will literally freak out and do full time. Um, so today, the kind of video I was thinking to do was to show my train layout. I, mean, I know I have not shown you it. Mm, yeah, I know, but I haven't shown it to you. So, it's fair enough to show it to you, and I'll be showing you a product I got from a hobby shop. Right? Yeah, it was like $3.95, so practically $4 because it was taxed. I, I wasn't in Delaware when I bought it. So, that's that. And, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. And share it to all your friends and all. Now I would love to see everybody comment. Because I'm trying, I'm trying to grow. So, not further ado, here we go. So, as you can see, um, this is practically my layout. Pretty big, it's messy, but it's a start. I just have it to the point where I can, like, go around it. Now, I was able to have, like, I have an Amtrak GG1. But, um, I was able to go around it at full speed with the Amtrak GG1 due to that all the tracks were nailed down. Now, there is one curve I was, because I needed to repair one of the nails. One of the tracks broke when I was going around the, with the Amtrak GG1. And what happened was, um, going around and the GG1 went on its side. Okay, so here's my hand. It was going around like usual, like that. It would just go like that, like an embankment. And what happened is, this time, I don't know why, but it went... Mm, so, like, on four wheels instead of eight. And what happened was, I guess from all the uh, thing, this decided to break, snap the tie, and now I have to, I replaced the track, I can still run on it, but now I have to put a speed restriction on it now. So, yeah, that's going to be crazy. Um, so, yeah, um, I will show you my GG1, just hold on. Alright, so, it was coming around here, right, it's fine. That spot goes over the switch and everything like that. Then it comes up to right here. Right here. If you look closely, you may be able to see it. Right. Sorry, it zoomed in so much. Like, it's this right here. Not enough lighting to have you see. But, right there snapped and as I was coming around I'll demonstrate with this caboose as I was coming around this is what happened okay the engine was fine but at the same time since I was going so fast this here you know, our Track went like this, one fell down, and that was like that. So it's no way of. It was like a real train wreck. Oh, yeah, and about this, because I care about my engines, I did not want to have it fall off. 
fell down. And let me show you what happened to the GG one. This one, this here, that's getting repaired, I think. Oh no, I can run that if I want. That American one over there cannot be replaced. That one's under. Now, look. Here it is. This here. Okay, so this here. Nice Amtrak GG1. Okay. Piling trucks came off, as you can see. The other one snapped off from right over the wires. Other than that, it's okay. It is repairable because the wires snapped. And luckily, my dad knows how to fix stuff. He works. He works on electric motors and all that. So that's cool. It's a nice GG1, as I as you can see. So, yeah. Um, same happened, okay, so, the same thing happened to one of my, okay, to one of my other GG ones, which is, hold on, let me get it, but only this one stayed intact. This is the American Railroad 1869 to 1969. <clears throat> This is a really nice engine. Same thing happened. Fell off the track. But luckily, this one was able to stay intact. But, the two piling trucks in the front, to keep it weighed down and not to derail, came off. They're still trying to find some parts. Let us know in the comments if you find anything. Because we are still trying to find some stuff. Because I think, yeah. They snap. We're just trying to find some part. <sighs> now, these are like from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So they do not have DCC. They obviously do not have DCC. Because, let's face it, they came in like the... You know, 2000s. So, another thing is, this train smoked. I have two trains. This one, Pennsylvania Railroad, and another one, a Conrail Special. These, if you ever see them, I recommend you do not buy them. For one reason, my Conrail Special steam locomotive of this type. Did the same thing to the pistons, but only on the other side. This one did the same thing. I had to, like, cut off a part just so I could put a new part on it. And it's still waiting for a part. Now. For now, it just sits there as... It's either probably going to get scrapped. Or something like that. But other than that, yeah. I mean, the tender is lovely. It's nice. And it's perfectly fine. That's okay. Here, what I don't understand, this engine can pull all my cars, just like the big boy, which indeed I have the big boy, but that is being repaired. And for whatever reason, this thing can pull anything, anything, no matter how heavy it is. 
while the other engines struggle to uh, achieve 10 cars up my grades, which is like a 1.2% grade in real life, or like a 2% grade if it was a standard gauge railroad. As you can see, if you work hard enough, you can find that it has grades. So, this is one of my favorite locomotives, and the product I will be showing you is this thing here. This thing is good for any, anything. It is made for, it is made for a different type of train. It's made for a Japanese train. <clears throat> set. But I use it for this kind of stuff. It works for anything and it's really, really good. And what I like about it is it can rerail any, it can be light, heavy, something like this, like a big tender, or articulated without any problems. I've had no problems with this. You put it like crooked, like this. Have the wheels like this. And you put it on. Have it crooked, like that. Push it down. Perfectly on. And I'll let you listen. See? Perfectly good. And now, the articulated. A two, four, four, two. Articulated Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive. Like I said, this is articulated. So, put you down. No problems at all. Pretty good. Now, here's another thing. I will say this. I will recommend it to you. But if you're bored, it's probably not for you. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, it is only four bucks. But if you get it in a place where it's tax free, three ninety five is the price. So that's pretty good. And wait a second. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And now you can just watch the train. Now let me plug it in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta get the chat. Hold on, bye, guys. Hold on. All right, I gotta. Pa I'll pause the video right now. And now to show you my train yard. That's not supposed to be like that. All right. So <clears throat> as you can see, for right now. It's just cars just lined up and trains on the rail on uh, platforms. But over here, I did not have enough space for the passenger cars, so they're going over in the freight area where you dump coal and iron ore. But that's okay. Here, I like to play what I like to call. Okay, so never mind. So I get the coal from there. And I back in the train with like one of the empty tanker, um, not tanker, sorry, uh, tender, sorry about that, and pour the coal right in there, right, and it goes right in. And then when I'm done, I just put it back into there. So, over here are the passenger cars. On this line over here are the cabooses. 
and on this line we have the tenders of shame why I call it the tenders of shame because all three of those need to be worked on this tender specifically is from a cab forward Southern Pacific lines and this is from a big boy and this is from a challenger all which they need to be worked on sadly enough this one is my last surviving articulated steam locomotive that is still operational and now as I go And plug it in I will now have the articulated steam locomotive oh. hold on guys I gotta fix my controller all right, guys, we're getting on the road. The heck? Oh, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Let me try a different locomotive. All right, guys, I was able to get it back up and running. So. Instead of the articulated, I was trying some other my other trains, and they weren't working. So, I was able to get a Strasburg Railroad cab forward in the original paint screen of the Philadelphia and Reading. So, this is really good. Count on. <laughs> that is a New York Central caboose in the back. And I have like three switches. I have two that are Pennsylvania Railroad, and here is one of them.
Now, my layout, okay, my layout runs like a real railroad. And how, and what I mean is by that is, you can have good days when there's no derailments and everything's going the way you want the plan. There are bad days where you get so frustrated you don't even want to start. So, the Philadelphia in writing, and it's really nice. Eleven eighty-seven. So, yep, this is my train. Um, uh, very highly detailed. I love, even though that it's old, it's made back when then when things were supposed to last. Supposed to last. As you can see, very detailed inside. Well, actually, you cannot see due to the fact that my camera piece. Back. And it does have two working headlights. If it's going forward, this here will light up. If it's going backwards, this here will light up. And that will turn on. Going forward, on, off. Going backwards, on, off. So that's really cool. Many engines did that. So, it's really cool. Nope, that can't be not, that cannot be taken off. Okay. So, yeah, that's one of my trains. Alright. You're cleared at the park. Roger. Over and out. It's Philadelphia and Roading, 1187. Over. Roger that. You're clear. <laughs> Next up is my Pittsburgh Railroad GG1. So, now it's my only last working TV one left. Now, don't know why these uh, aircraft coaches are acting like this. Never had a problem with it. But yeah, very quiet and very smooth. Runs very smooth, and this has been sitting for about mm, maybe six months, and it's not like all the other engines, where if it's been sitting for a while, you will have to not let any cars, unless, like I did, I'm very experienced, put no cars on it and let it run around for a few times until it's loosened up. This one, you don't have to do that. And that's what I like. And these, this train engine specifically can go really fast. Now I'll demonstrate it on that one curve. If at least these Amtrak cars will stop derailing on the freaking switches and they will cooperate with you.
God dang. Alright, hold on guys. Alright, so. As you can see, I'm not going to be using those cards due to the way that it's acting like that. And it slows down pretty good. So, that's pretty good. Now, as I try and fit in the frame, oh, good. Now, one of the things I like that you can do is, you see this up here? Those are not for show. You can literally put power lines above them. Have this come up and can get electric from it. That's one thing. Me and my dad are thinking about doing that. And then it would get electric. From that. Um, and I forget what this one is modeled after. You probably can put it up, uh, pull it up on the uh, Google search. And yeah, 4866 Pennsylvania Railroad, 4866. Very highly detailed. Windows very accurate. Horns on both ends. I don't know, but GG once had horns on both ends. Due to the fact that <clears throat> this engine okay, this engine in fact had two cabs on the same engine. As I can see you can see here. That's one. Now if you want to switch to another cab, he'd have to get down, walk over. And get into there. That was some engineers. That was one of the engineers. Things that they did not like about the GE ones. Now. We'll say this. It's a really nice engine. Now. This is all my pop pops. Um, stuff. He is no longer with us. But. Gave us all to me. All up to me. So. I will hope you guys enjoyed. And. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>